this tutorial begins, I want to mention that I'm not the best person to get the controller from. But you all asked, so here's my best attempt at trying to explain how to do things in NFL. So, there you go. Hello everybody, my name is Ikman CSX42 Gaming and welcome to FL Studio. Today I'm going to be doing... Today I'm going to be making a tutorial on five sounds you can make that are very simple to make but can be very effective when used right. I'm only going to be using the plugin Citrus, so if we head in here and we uh, replace this with a uh, Citrus channel, we're going to be using this guy right here, Citrus. It's a really powerful and simple tool. It's the first one I learned. And let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to make, I have my piano, by the way. So that's that's the thing that we're going to be working with. It's okay if you don't have a piano. I just have it because it's useful. Anyways, the first thing we're going to make is a sub bass. Now, for me, the only thing for me is I'll usually just turn up the unison sub level to like 50. So it sounds like that. And if I bring the notes down... It works perfectly fine the way it is. Sub, for me, a sub bass is really easy to make, but if we have this, it's perfectly fine. And if we want to be a little fancy with it, we'll make a volume envelope and we'll just kind of make it go down to like there. So we can have like a... So you can kind of tell when it's being hit again. It's just stuff. And if I want to make it a little louder, I'll just turn up that. So it's really, really bassy, really good sounding. So we've got our sub bass. Perfect. We'll name this guy Sub, which is perfectly fine. The next thing on the agenda is going to be a. L Actually, no. We'll do. A we'll do chords. Chords really shouldn't need an explanation. It's just the notes you play when you hear chords. Now, for me, this is also a very simple thing. So what I usually will do is I'll make a saw wave, and I will turn up the unison jam up the unison phase. I'll turn down the pitch a little bit and we'll get something like this. Maybe actually turn up the pitch so it has a slightly heavier sound to it like this. We'll see actually, hold on. The higher it is like the more heavy, I guess you could say, not exactly heavy, but the higher you do it like that, quote unquote heavier it sounds, but don't do it too high or else you get this. And that really doesn't sound good at all. So I'd recommend like maybe 60 to 70% really gives you that. That kind of good, decent sound. Maybe if you threw in like a low note there, it'd sound good as well. So you've got something just like that. So we will name this chords. So now we will move on to the next one. And the next one we're going to be making is a pluck. So let's go to default. So we're going to try and make like a short kind of hit on a note that we can use repeatedly throughout whatever part of the song we're making. I prefer to do it with a square or a saw, although if you want to do it with a sign or a um, whatever else you got or triangle wave or whatever else will work too, I recommend a square or a saw to get that like nice, loud, noticeable kind of crisp sound. I'm going to be using a square for this. So the first thing that I'm going to do, and after you've made your square wave, it, so you have this sound. I'll turn up the FX knob just a little bit so it's like a little, little heavier. And then obviously if you want to make a pluck, you can make your volume curve down like this. Make it nice and short so you have this kind of sound. And another kind of thing that really gives it a nice plucky sound. If you go to your pitch envelope and you make it go from one octave above, get rid of the tail end of it, but if you go from one octave above and immediately shoot down, you get this kind of sound, which is kind of it coming from the high note. But if you do it really, really quickly, it gives you a really nice kind of pluck. So I, I'd recommend doing that. So we're gonna rename this pluck. Next on the list, I guess we will make the lead. I'm saving the complicated one for last. A lead can really be anything. I, there's really no limit as to what you can make your lead. Again, for this, I'd recommend a square or a saw wave, but anything will really work. So I'm going to work with, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a square lead. So usually I'll throw a bit of an FX, I'll throw a lot of FX on it. And we can go into this guy and... Usually when it comes to making a lead, I just tend to mess around and see what sounds right. So we're just going to go into the second modulator, or the second operator, and we're going to just see what we can do. The 
These aren't the chords, this is the lead. I think that sounds decent for now. We'll use this. It's a... Okay, so I'll show you how I made this. On Operator 1, it's a normal square wave with, um, with about 40% on the effects knob. And over here, we've got 50% on the Operator 2 knob. And on Operator 2, we've got... I'll just set these to... We've got 60% on the skew. We have no tension. And we've got 50% on the main wave shape. So, we've got this sound. It's got a nice bass sound to it, too. But we will be calling this the lead. Now, the last one is actually quite complicated, so I'm going to preload that one, and I'm going to explain what's happening. We're going to be using a growl for this, so let's actually use this one. This is the sound that you should try and get for, so we've got... This is a very simple sound, and I will do my best to explain it. So, we've got, I'll just go from the right first page on. So we've got three on the unison order. We've got panning up to max. Volume is there. Pitch is a little lower. We've got ours on 30%. Sub is maximum. Phase is also maximum. And the envelope variation is all the way down. We've got our bass setting in the EQ to max. And that's it for the first one. So, on the first one, it's actually completely normal. So, we'll move on to the next one. And on the next one, we've got, we have a triangle wave. That's on two. That's normal. And our oscillator, we have this one. We've got the first one, two, three, fourth one. We've got these here. You can see the darker lines in this oscillator tab. And we've got the first one marked down. This, the second, third, fourth one. And the fifth one, I believe that's it, so we will move on to the next one. This one is maxed out. This one's maxed out. Then we will go to six. This can be on any of them. I don't really know why I have it this way. This one is turned down to one. We turn this, um, let's actually see here. Yes, we're turning the, um, we're turning the tension down to 30%. The shape is up to 25. And if we go to operator one, the modulation is up to... 50% instead of the max, because when you go to max, it sounds like this. Which I don't really exactly like, so I turn this down halfway and you get a nice... You get a nice, nice crisp sound. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, I'm just going to make sure that's all of it. And I believe it is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a kick. Let me actually find a nice kick. Uh, Vulture gave me these drums, so they're pretty nice, but Let me actually take this guy open in a new channel and take this guy and I am going to spend the next Some amount of time and I'm gonna make a short drop using only these sounds if you have any questions about these sounds Ask them in the comments below anyways that is gonna do it for me for now I will be back when I have finished these this this beat this drop that I'm gonna make so sit tight and I'll be back one thing I just realized that before I actually start making this, it is good. I it is probably especially for this wub. If you don't know how to like make it actually work in the song, I'll explain it right now. You need to use what are called automation clips. Automation clips are what make things move while the song is playing. So if I do this, we'll put this pattern here. I will explain what an automation clip does. Basically, you select the area. By double clicking on this black bar on the top, you click and drag your area. Then we're gonna head into here. We're using Mod X, which is this knob right here. Right click on it and create your automation clip. Now, basically, uh, the best way to explain this is just by showing it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the line for how this is gonna sound. It's not gonna be final, but you'll 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 be able to see how that works. So if I go up, down, up, down with this, it will sound like this. So, so you can see, just for, specifically, so what you can see from this is that when it is low, it's like not being modulated. I really don't know how to explain it. It's just like, how much of a wah-wah do you want? That's how, that's, I'm not the one you should be getting tutorials from.
Okay, everybody, I have finished this very short loop. I think it sounds half decent. It could do with a little EQing, a little mixing here and there. Maybe I've turned the web up a little bit. But this is what I've made with only the sounds I've created. The only other thing I've done is the two drums aren't here. I'm just boosting their volume just a little bit. Other than that, this is what I've made. <laughs> Okay, everyone, well, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you at least learned something about very simple sound design. If you could glean any sort of logic from that, this is the first tutorial I've actually given in f Studio. So, I really don't know how to teach people. People have requested that I give some tutorial or some knowledge that I could. I figured I'd start this, start simple. Maybe later on I'll get into some more advanced sound design, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. That is going to do it with this video, and I will see all of you in the next one. Talk to you guys later.